Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Terry Rooch, and this is Serious Automotive Training. Welcome back to another great module mine. We're up to module 19. We're going to split this in half. So this is module 19A. Okay. This is part of my YouTube series for Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Safety Inspection, Recertification, or Initial Certification for the Mechanic. It's also great information for the vehicle owner or the shop owner. My information comes directly from the Department of Motor Vehicles website comes from prior instructor clinics, or it just comes from training courses that I've done over the years. As a prior high school teacher, community college instructor, and a DOD contractor with 10 years of teaching in the military, let me fortify your brain with the great knowledge of serious automotive training to help assist you with this uh, initial certification or recertification. So where we're at, we're in publication 45, so we're using the, uh, the current edition, which is 1117, for the inspection, Vehicle Equipment Inspection Regulation Manual. Where this book comes from, it comes from the uh, PA Code Title 67. So Pennsylvania Code, and it comes right out of Chapter 175. Just to be aware, Chapter 177 is the emission standards. Okay, so it's uh, this isn't the Vehicle Code. Um, this is the Transportation Code. Different book. Okay, so where we're at, we're going to split this into two sections. Again, we're only dealing with the inspection procedure. So, subchapter E, I'm up to about page 37 here. Today we're going to utilize subchapter E. We're going to go over a ton of bulletins. Bulletins are great information. The DMV website for Pennsylvania has all the bulletins back to 2000. You can see mine here go all the way back to 92. Excellent information. Real world, it takes this PA code title 67, chapter 175 and breaks it down to real world information. So it's good because why do you need to be concerned with this? Well today, not only are you taken into uh, in front of an administrative court for Pennsylvania inspection for penalties, but now you're taken in front of a district judge or court of common pleas. So you really need to be concerned with this information or where to find it. So what we're gonna cover today, we're gonna talk about lamps, lenses, and headlamps. Headlamp aiming or headlight aiming. Either one, we'll break that down. We're gonna talk about the charts in the back of the book, chart one and two, which are in the back of publication 145, 45. We're gonna talk about the tables in the back of the book, and I also have a letter indicating function chart here. It, uh, it's gonna help you identify what type of lamp you have on a vehicle. So again, we're only dealing with the inspection procedure. So let's, let's start talking about lamps. Again, we're gonna break this down into two sections. So this is 19A. We'll get about halfway through here. We'll do a little review, and then we'll come back with 19B. Okay? So we'll take it nice and slow. In Italiano, i palo piano. Piano. That means slow. So let's start with illuminated signs or decals. So what are those? Well, I'm going to tell you what they are. Inside the back of a vehicle, you could have an illuminated sign or decal. that passes. So, I have a bulletin right here from September of 2013. Okay, safety inspection bulletin. I'm going to read it to you. In an effort to provide clarification, the display of a single illuminated decal in the corner of the rear window of a vehicle is not a basis for failing a safety inspection. There you go. As discussed here, an illuminated decal is a battery-powered device measuring no greater than six inches in width, six inches in height, with an illuminated source not designed to protect light beyond the vehicle. Project. So, there you are. Pass it. Bingo. September 13th. So, as long as we're talking about lamps, lights, and lenses, we want to get this one out of the way about the illuminated decals. Okay? Or illuminated signs. Next, let's talk about candle power. So, what candle power is, it's a rating for the intensity of the headlight. It's the amount of light that it puts out. Sure, the police could cite you for this, but for Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Safety Inspection, for the inspection procedure, it's not a rejectable item. So if the headlights aren't bright enough, okay, we don't check it. So candle power is out the door. We don't check it. I believe back in the 70s, we used to up until the 80s. I think around 92, maybe we eliminate it. But we don't check anymore. The police do. Okay. Let's look at our uh, chart here. Again, in the back of the book, we have two charts that I want to refer to. So the vehicle that uh, that I drive is a Hummer H2. 
Beautiful. Beautiful Hummer. I was a shop foreman and a Hummer dealer all the way over in uh, Flemington, New Jersey. I also worked at Tank and Hummer Cadillac in New, New York City. So I'm a Hummer freak. So, in the back of the book we have table two and we have table three. Table two is the required equipment for lights. Table three is the location. Now, table two and three go together. Table four and five go together. Here's the difference. Two and three is for an 80 inch or wider vehicle. So a multi-purpose passenger vehicle, which my H2 is, it's wider than 80 inches. So the light designations are different. So let's start simple here. In the chart, it tells you headlights need to be white. Well, it doesn't matter what vehicle you're dealing with here. Remember, we're only in passenger car and light truck, okay? But a multi-purpose passenger vehicle could is a passenger car, but it could be over or under 80 inches. Perfect example, Chevy Suburban, half-ton Suburban. It's under 80 inches. Now you get a three-quarter ton Suburban. That one's over 80 inches. The difference is the charts. So you got a three-quarter ton Suburban you're inspecting. You're going to use chart four and five. The 1500 is two and three. Just to throw some information at you, the difference between the two multi-purpose passenger vehicles is the ID lamps and the clearance lamps mounted on the top and the rear of the vehicle. Okay, so I just want to throw that at you quick. So let's start with the color. So, according to table two, multi-purpose passenger vehicle, 80 inches wider, so there's my H2. It needs two white lights. Well, how do you know they're white? <laughs> well, real simple. PennDOT tells you to get a clear piece of paper, put the paper over the headlight. If you see anything but white, like if you got blue lights in there, if you could see blue through the paper, reject it. Now you see red. Lights are, limit, are displaying red. So if you see red displaying through the paper in front of the headlight when it's on, reject that. Now in the past, what we did was we looked at the bulb. So if a headlight looked blue or, or purple, we removed it. And as long as it had an SAE or a DOT, it was okay. Well, that's not the case anymore because now they're coming, SAE and DOT are not approved. What the police do is they have an intensity meter, they hold it up to the headlight, and they'll get the reading, and it tells you if it's in the good area. For a technician specking a vehicle, white light, the powder is uh, what vehicle it is, and use the paper trick. The paper trick works. Okay, so let's continue on here. We're going to talk about pulsating stop lamps. This is pretty unique. It's been uh, out for a little bit now. March of 18, PennDOT put out a bulletin. I'm going to read it to you. The Vehicle Inspection Division received inquiries regarding passenger cars and light trucks. So, some chapter 8, that have pulsating stop lamps. For safety inspection purposes, a stop lamp that is not steady burning would be rejectable under chapter 175.80, which is in the uh, lamps and lenses, which we're talking about right now. So, pulsating stop lamps, <laughs> they fail. Ornamental lights. An ornamental light is any light that's not, for the purpose of my H2, it's not a required light. So an ornamental light is anything that's not on this sheet. PA safety inspection, they don't have to work. Ornamental, we don't deal with ornamental lights for inspection procedure. Okay? So you don't throw on the vehicle. We don't deal with uh, ornamental lamps. Okay, let's keep going here. So, obstructions, tinted covers. So if you have a headlight that has a tinted cover over top, okay, real common. I think the police will leave you go during the day. <laughs> but the inspection uh, station won't. So, I got bolt here from May of 92. Headlight obstructions. Okay, uh, subject uh, that section requires you to fail a vehicle for inspection if auxiliary equipment is placed on, in, or in front of any lamp. How about that? Screening and tinted covers mounted in front of the headlights fall into this category and is cause for rejection. So May of 92, it has never changed. So those tinted covers that you see on trucks and vans and they come in for inspection, 
They need to be off when you inspect the vehicle. Okay? So, now let's jump down here a little bit. We're going to talk about lenses. Uh, if you look at the inspection manual, it lists that lenses cannot be cracked or broken. Someone took it upon themselves to remove mine, drill holes in the back, and auxil install auxiliary lights. Hey, that's great, but guess what? Now they don't work, so I had to get them fixed. So the lens in the back, the reflex reflector was broken, needs to be fixed. So, fog and auxiliary lights. So let's talk about fog lights and auxiliary lights for a second here. We're going to put you back to May of 2011. Again, bulletins are excellent information. They take that publication 45 and break it down into layman's terms, terms or real world examples. So, fog lights and auxiliary lamps. If a vehicle equipped with fog lights or auxiliary lights is presented for safety inspection, one light is broken or inoperative. The vehicle fails. So, if they're not required. Fog lights and auxiliary lights aren't required on the uh, table too. So, however, instead of making a repair, the vehicle owner may opt to remove the fog or auxiliary light in order for the vehicle to successfully pass inspection. So there it is in black and white. You could take them off. Someone told me a couple weeks ago, they said, I've never seen a vehicle with factory auxiliary lights. Well, I had a few Chevy trucks and I have an H2 and they came with factory auxiliary lights. It wasn't an option. It was, fa it was a factory package. At an S10 Baja, these things had factory lights. Dodge trucks had them. And now this beautiful orange H2, I have factory equipped auxiliary lights. So, hey, you can take them off because it's not a required light. So, let's keep going here. Uh, we talked about the covers, fog lights. Let's regroup. Uh, we'll cover what we did. We'll pick up on uh, module B. We'll pick up with spoilers center mounted stop lamps, and then we'll talk about aiming your headlights. So, just to uh, talk about what we, what we um, got today for information, we're in publication 45, so we're still in subchapter E. This is the meat and potatoes of the inspection procedure. So we talked about the illuminated signs and the decals, which are legal, legal for inspection. We talked about not measuring candle power. So if they're not bright, guess what? It still passes, we don't check it. Headlights have to be white, Remember, you could still look at the bulb, SAE or DOT on the, on the bulb itself. <laughs> it, could be, it could be fake. So pulsating stamp lamps, I gave you the information on that. Fail it. Ornamental lights, we don't inspect them for uh, subchapter E. Obstructions with the tint, hey, they got to go. So we're going to pick up here in a couple minutes with uh, 19B. And we'll talk about the tables again. We'll talk about the charts in the back. And we're going to look at some diagrams for aiming headlights. Again, this is Serious Auto Training. My name is Terry Roach. Reach out to me at SeriousAutoTraining at Yahoo.com. Follow me on LinkedIn at Terry Roach. Or just give me a shout out on YouTube. Again, from beautiful Pennsylvania, have a wonderful afternoon.